this is my painting that I did. Uh, it's a master copy by Jacob Van uh, Waskethal. It's a still life with fruit. And this is one of my copies that I did. It's um, actually a step-by-step -step that I did online and it's a portrait of an old woman. It's, it's actually at the Getty. And um, what we're gonna show you tonight is how to varnish. There's some different varnishes that you might wanna know about. Um, Rublev makes a great one called Conservar. So you may uh, wanna try that, natural pigments. And I trust um, George O'Hanlon because he's a chemist and he's just, he's the guru of, of all things painting and, and chemistry. There's also one that I've used many times, a Windsor Newton, which is, is a basic Damar varnish. Um, and then um, what we have here is the Gamma Bar, which is actually probably the safest one because it's removable and uh, a lot easier to remove. So we're gonna open that. I'll let you open. Is it already, already poured some yeah. in? Now, one, year, one thing you're gonna see on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, is you'll see these people taking their varnish and pouring it onto the onto their, their painting. Please don't do that. That's a really stupid thing to do, especially if it's canvas because it's it could puddle up and it's just a, a very, very bad idea. So we're gonna both start. Now I'm gonna use a sponge brush because I don't want the brush strokes and I don't want the hairs. Um, this is great that you bought this. <laughs> this was $20 and it was it's by Trakel and um and it it says gambling on it by Trico. okay and it's a beautiful brush and it's perfect for this because the canvas is a little more forgiving and it's going to have a lot more um i don't know soul to it with the brush i think this is a good choice for that i'm going to try it with the sponge brush on mine and when i do it by the way, when you're varnishing, less is more. Do not try to oversaturate or, or you know, pile the, uh, the varnish on. You want to just wet the surface, that's it. I always go from the outer edges. Do you see how I'm overlapping my edge? And I start to work my edge. And I start pulling it up because I don't want any puddling. And I'm just gonna keep working it up and I have plenty of people here to play, you missed a spot. <laughs> and I'm gonna continue on, and you can actually start yours too. Mm -hmm. Remember, you see how I'm taking off the excess? Always start from the outer edge and move up, because when you do that, you make sure you get all your edges. And then I try to work my way in. This has just always worked well for me. The other thing to note is you must wait at least three to six months, even a year before you varnish because the paint layers dry from the bottom up. It starts like some of the oilier colors seep up and you think it's dry and it's not really dry. So you, ha you really must wait to, to varnish. If you had to put something on it before six months, maybe just do a retouch varnish. And all retouch varnishes, it, it's a thinned out Damar varnish. It, it just doesn't have as much of the thicker um, uh, Damar crystals in it. It's been thinned out with, I guess, mineral spirits. So you can see mine is wood. Mine is reacting a little bit different. I can see all the little spots where dust may have gotten in on it. <laughs> And it's just part of it with being in Los Angeles because there's no way to get that out of the surface at this point. It's, it's part of the painting. And I'm not really that worried about it. This is my copy um, that I enjoyed doing. And I learned a lot doing these copies. But as you'll notice, the reason to varnish is because a lot of the paint sinks in. Certain colors will dry more glossy than others, especially the transparent colors. The earth tones sometimes tend to dry a little more matte and dead. So you'll see like it, it's kind of dead looking. All right, class, tell me if I missed a spot. Well, it looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Do you see the difference? Why I mean, it's yours, huge. Why is yours so much more glossy? 
Because mine's on wood and hers is on canvas. So it's going to absorb the canvas more. Now I'm going to do another piece that I did that's kind of a different, completely different. This is also on wood, but this has foil on it. To protect the foil, you can either use um, shellac or I'm using varnish to keep it from tarnishing. And this is a new series that I'm working on. It's got a lot of mixed media stuff on it, but it's fun. So it reveals, do you see how the image gets more revealed when I start to put the gloss on? Look at that, that looks amazing. That looks so good. So you have to work somewhat quick. Also, the other thing is, is not to let your varnish get too warm. If it's too warm outside, or too cold. So I kept my varnish inside before I came out here because if it gets too cold, it doesn't react well as well as getting too warm. So you want it to be just at nice room temperature and, um, and always do this outside. You should probably wear a mask. There's enough circulation of air right now that I'm not needing it, but um, you can see how this just pulls everything together. And this one's called Sentimental Stranger. This is another strange piece that I'm playing with. And are we doing only one coat? Yes. yes. I don't think you need more. If you want to come back out in a little while and do a second coat, mm -hmm. by all means. But look how you're getting puddling on yeah. there. Okay, so just go the other, just brush it out. Mm -hmm. And then I have one more piece that using the sentimental stranger. What um, do you usually just leave it outside to dry? Yes. Um, try to leave it in a place where it's not dusty. So, um, you know, you just have to pick your time, not when it's windy, obviously. But this just brings the colors and the, the paint to light. Like, look at hers. You gotta see that. God, that looks good. When you're varnishing, it's good to do a bunch of, at a time because you basically are going to throw the I'm throwing the sponge brush away at the end. Now, um, a word of caution: if your paint is not completely dry, this has happened to me. Getting ready for a show, I I decided I was just going to go for it, and as I was um, brushing my painting, big sky painting, I'm noticing these white streaks, and I'm like, wow, that's weird. Well. The white wasn't dry, so I was streaking the whole thing. It was like, no! <laughs> so take it from me. Make sure your painting is totally dry before you jump in. So how do you know if you should wait three, six, or a year? The longer you wait, the better. You know, just make sure that you don't put it in a place. If you have a cat with cat hair and all of that, try to keep it in a place where it doesn't get a lot of dust. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if you use too much oil, the dust, the oil in the painting will suck up all the dust and you'll have this nice coat of fur. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of that. Anyway, so here you go. This is varnishing. Isn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.